Oh, how uh, how are you doing? How are how are things there in uh, in Quebec? It's probably all locked up, like. Yeah, like uh, for everybody in, uh, I think in the world almost. <laughs> That's uh, that's crazy. It sucks because we can't train. We can do mostly nothing. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I'm in Nova Scotia, so uh, very much the same here. It's quiet. You can't really do much. You can go out to parks and stuff like that, but not a whole lot yeah. of training or anything can be can be done. So you you still train and everything, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I do. I do train and teach, but uh, all the the gyms are closed, so so we can't. One of the things that uh, that I really wanted to have you on here for, because I, a lot of I have a lot of fighters on, guys who are currently fighting, up and comers. But uh, one thing I really like about you is is what you're doing. You know, the the walk, the four thousand kilometers that you're walking to raise awareness um, for people suffering from from depression. So so just kind of, I guess, give me an overview about why you started it and why why you came up with the idea. Uh, after my uh, professional career, I I got a, a big. Uh, crash i mean uh, you know i, I suffered uh, myself uh, from depression and uh, i almost killed myself so um, so uh, when i got back into the gyms i uh, i discovered that i was happy doing jujitsu having my men hugs <laughs> like i say so so i just wanted to share that uh, that kind of information uh, about uh, the good, uh, uh, about the, the benefit of uh, jujitsu and training, just just training. So uh, uh, sometimes I wasn't feeling uh, good enough to go to the gym, and uh, but good enough to uh, go for a walk. And and I brought my friends sometimes, uh, former uh, militaries, uh, in the woods, and every time they were saying that you know it was the best day of the of the week. Because uh, they were only thinking about uh, the walk, uh, about uh, everything in in the woods, and right now, not about uh, the past or the future, but the, it's right here, right now. And then I lost a friend uh, from Hamilton, and he uh, he killed himself. So uh, I just wanted to uh, to never uh, see one of my friends doing the same as him. So I just wanted to uh, to uh, walk and deliver a message through the towns that I was going to walk. It's going to start, correct me if I'm wrong, it starts in Montreal and it goes to Newfoundland? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, I was uh, starting to, uh, in Montreal, and then uh, and that was on February, February 29 uh, of uh, 2020. Um, and uh, I was going to stop eight months later uh, in St. John's, Newfoundland. Um, <laughs> and uh, mostly I was going to sleep outside and, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, just walk. Yeah, I did, uh, I did something similar. Have you heard of the, the Camino de Santiago, the pilgrimage? No, no, no. It's a, uh, it's a pilgrimage in Spain where people go for like religious reasons and, and people will walk for about a month. It's a thousand kilometers. I did a portion okay. of it, but uh, I did it more for my own, I, yeah. uh, you know, not for religious, just it was just a, I needed to get away. I needed to find something to do. And I found when I did it, I found a part of me that I felt like I was missing. I, I really was able to f discover myself. And I think, uh, I think it's important that people do stuff like that or find jiu-jitsu or whatever it may be their their passion so i find it really inspirational what you're doing and uh i think it's really important that people follow and and uh and, and look up your story because it really is touching yeah thank you thank you and uh, uh you know i'm not doing this for me um, yeah of course there's a bit of for yeah. me because uh mostly i will be alone and uh you know i i uh, when you are alone you have a lot of things to think about but uh it was to uh, just to raise awareness, like like you say that, uh, and 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 there's something to do, you know. When you suffer, when you feel that you are like alone, but you are not, you know. Go out, take a walk, a run, what you know, whatever it please you, and 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 just you know, call someone. You are not alone. There's so many uh, phone numbers. 
where you you know you you can uh, get some help and uh, and that's uh, that's my goal my goal is to uh, to save as many people as i can yeah you see it a lot with especially mma athletes because they reach 40 or 38 or however old they are when they choose to retire and once they retire um you know their entire lives were revolved around martial arts and you think like for example ronda rousey was probably the biggest and the greatest example i could think of when she lost she left and she hit an all-time low and she was public about it saying that you know she she wanted to kill herself she she reached this point where she didn't know what to do she thought she was the best and now she's no longer the best and i think when people are brought up and they spend their entire lives trying to be the greatest they can when it's taken away from them they hit they hit a new low so i think it's really important and not just for mma fighters but for everybody yeah. who 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 yeah. feels that um, I guess on your career, um, I mean, it's been what ten years since since you've last fought. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. The you know that's why you know I was going to be. Uh, uh, my goal was to be in St. John's, Newfoundland, on uh, November 13, because ten years ago was uh, my last fight on November 13. Yeah. So was, what is your question? It. Uh, I guess. Do you miss it? And how much do you miss uh, fighting? Is it? I, I don't miss. I don't miss at all fighting. Uh, what I was missing was the the, the glory, you know. Uh, of course, I am a competitive guy, uh, but being hit hurts a lot. <laughs> so so <laughs> so that that part of uh, MMA, you know, I don't miss it. Uh, I did some, uh, I did one one last jujitsu fight in Halifax a few years ago, and uh, there was, uh, you know, I, uh, before that fight, I didn't train for. Uh, more uh, five years for five years i think or more uh and i decided to go fight and uh and uh i i hurt myself <laughs> so so for me that part of being hurt uh don't miss me at all so fighting uh, of course or training of course it, it's 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 fun but uh, the part where i hurt myself it's uh, no i uh, it's a no go for me it's uh, it's over what what ultimately got you into MMA? Um, you know, you hear people who have wrestling backgrounds. I know you did a little bit of karate, I think, when you were you were a kid. But what was the decision yeah. to be like? I am going to fight. I want to be a fighter. Because at that time, uh, there weren't many Canadians really in it. I mean, Carlos Newton and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, yeah. there weren't there wasn't as big of a, a platform in in Canada necessarily. No, no, that wasn't big. Uh, Carlos Newton was of my uh, one of my favorites. And uh, especially when he beat up uh, Pat Meditic, and I was like, uh, you know, uh, that that, yeah, I never saw that guy. I, I hope one day I will see that human being. Uh, what got me into MMA is, um, you know, I got beat up by uh, by four four guys in a bar where I was working, and and uh, the only thing I knew was Aikido. <laughs> back in the day so things that i'm sorry guys but it doesn't work so that was <laughs> that was three punches in the same time plus one kick and you know you, you can't you know even with mma I, I wouldn't have been able to do something maybe i would have been able to to uh to reach one guy and wrestle with him and be prevent some other hits but you know it's it's so quick it's so fast so uh i got beat up I uh, I got big concussion, but I started to train in jiu-jitsu because in uh, on television we were seeing the the jiu-jitsu uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu in the the fighters descriptions, and uh, I saw some guys uh, coming in the bar where I, I was with uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu Victoriaville, my hometown, on it, and I asked them you know where they found it. And uh, they invited me in the gym where I got beat up in jujitsu, not uh, not uh, punches, uh, so badly. But I I liked it so much that you know I I went there a few times. Then I did a first competition. Uh, that was a amateur MMA competition, uh, uh, and at the end I got into the final. I uh, I almost beat up um, the UCC champion back in the days. That was the TKO champion, and it was David Luazo. 
David Luazo, and and everybody was like, "What the fuck? That guy just just started to train five months ago, and he's almost, uh, you know, uh, he's all, almost killing uh, David Luazo." So so they they put uh, they give you know they asked me to go pro right away, but I say no. There's no way that I will go there. I have so many things to to learn, and uh, for one year I did uh, so many amateurs fight. Um, that you know, uh, a year after that, I was a pro, and then five years after that, I was in the UFC. That's uh, you know, that's the story. <laughs> yeah, you fought uh, you fought some some lot of top level fighters. You fought Josh Koscheck, Dwayne Ludwig, Shoney Carter. Is there is there one fight where you're like, that was the best fight of my career? Uh, one of my best fights was, uh, uh, you know, except for the, the end of the first round, that was uh, my fight against Koniyoshi Eronaka. That was the Japanese guy at the Bell Center for the first UFC fight uh, on uh, uh, in, in Canada. So, so, um, so that that one was uh, one 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 of my favorite, and every time I watch it, it's one of my favorite. But close. To that one is another UFC fight. It was against Luke Kumo. Uh, that was in 2006. That was my first fight of the night, and uh, and uh, that you know my stand up sucked because uh, I, w- I was uh, you know I knocked down so many guys. I I did some great things against other guys, but Dwayne Ludwig uh, when he knocked me out in uh, five or six seconds. I, I, uh, my confidence on my feet was, was, uh, below zero. And, uh, and uh, I was, uh, you know, the way I was fighting with Lukumu was l- like this, you know, just to, I didn't want to throw punches, but just to block his and find a way to go on the ground. And, um, uh, you know, when you look at, when you look at me, it sucks. Uh, but for only the parts that I, I am fighting on my feet. So the ground game was, Amazing! The way I was dressing with him, that was that was uh, perfect for me. You spent a, a lot of time training at TriStar, so you've you've obviously have wrestled and and trained with George St. Pierre. What what do you what do you say about George St. Pierre that that I as a fan aren't seeing? Like what 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 is it about training with someone like that that like stands apart uh, from anybody else you've trained? I'll, you know, outside of the gym, back in the day, he was a close friend. Right now, you know, I, 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 he's a guy that I respect. We are not close like before. Yeah. But that guy was amazing. Outside, uh, uh, outside of the gym, he was, you know, he was always bringing us where he was training. You know, he, he wanted always me to follow him because uh, more... I was, um, you know, better I was becoming, better he was becoming. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? It, it may, does, it, does it make sense? Yeah, you surround. You know, I was one. Yeah. yeah, surround yourself with people that make you better. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, so, uh, you know, even if uh, you know, yeah, let's say he was doing this for him, that was so so good for me. You know, that was amazing for me. Mm-hmm. My wrestling, you know, as soon as I moved in Montreal, my wrestling. Uh, everything, my wrestling skills. I was going to uh, to a gym with him. Yeah, that was an Olympic uh, wrestling gym. Uh, they they were all you know all really good, uh, and I was like fresh meat for them. That 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 part sucks, but you know I have so uh, you know um, I, I am so proud that I never wanted to you know my one my number one goal was to take them down. I've I haven't been able to, but close. So 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 that's all because of GSP. You know, he, he taught me so many things, and uh, and that was, uh, you know, that guy is uh, is amazing. He's amazing in the gym and outside of the gym. Yeah, he's someone else who's you know he retired and came back, and he spent some time having troubles as well. If for people who have trouble once they retire, whether it be from MMA or any other sport or anything in life. What is one thing you'd recommend? Obviously, you've been through a lot. Like you said, your story is very touching with the way you got into the sport as well as the troubles you had outside of it. What's what's some advice you would give to someone? Uh, um, I would say that the, the best advice uh, I have to give to someone is uh, 
to never stop, never stop uh, training. Uh, of course, we, uh, we, uh, you know, we can't train twice a day all our life. Uh, but, but, you know, as soon as you stop, there's no, you know, there's so many things that you have inside, inside of your brain. I mean, there's, it's chemical. So you need the uh, acetacin, you need uh, the, uh, the, all, all the, the other elements that make you happy. So as soon as you stop training, it's everything stop. So, so it, you will be like a junkie who, who, uh, who need drugs, you know, but you don't have. So, so you will do stupid things and, and you will do things that you might regret all your life, but, but never stop training, never stop, you know, if you, if you're not comfortable enough to be uh, at the gym where you were, uh, just try to find someone else, you know, to train with. Uh, there's so many gyms today, there's so many places, there's so many sports, there's so many activities. So as soon as you stop physical activities, you, you might crash. Yeah, and, and I mean, that goes a lot way, a long way, especially like for me anyway. I, I grew up swimming. Swimming was my sport. And when I stopped, yep. not to the same level, but um, I just I felt like I wasn't myself. And I started jiu-jitsu uh, last year, and uh, yep. I'm terrible at it, absolutely awful. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I found, you know, when I went, I felt, I felt good. Even if I tapped out 10 times, 12 times, the one time I didn't tap out, it felt great. And I think it's very rewarding. And it's a good message, I think, for a lot of people. Um, so before, I don't want to take any more of your time. Um, where, where can people uh, follow your journey of uh, 4,000 kilometers? Um, my, my journey will be uh, mostly and uh, exclusively on my uh, Facebook page or my YouTube page. It's uh, La Route des Guerriers. It's, uh, uh, you know, La Route is in French. It's like the road. And uh, Gary is like uh, my uh, my nickname. It's Warrior, so it's uh, on lrdj rdg dot ca. That's my website. And outside of that, you know, you will have uh, you know uh, from that link, you will have uh, all the the link uh, the links inside, and you will be able to follow me on on. Uh, on uh, Facebook and Instagram, I have, I have a hard time to deal with Instagram, but uh, you know my personal Instagram is okay. But my uh, La Route de Guerrier Instagram is, uh, it's called, you know, I need to think about it. Uh, but m for my Facebook page, I have so many videos. I will try to make some en English uh, video, anglophone video, because uh, mostly I speak. Um, you know, my my first language is French. Um, and uh, I need to work on my confidence. <laughs> so yeah, when, when I talk to you, it's it's okay. It's, yeah, I think it's you great. Know. It's it's really good. It's better cool. than my friends. So, so, <laughs> but uh, but you know, I, uh, I I feel shy every time I, I try to do videos. Uh, uh, Anglophone video is it's I'm like oh it's not going it, it's not good enough. But I shouldn't say that. I should go and and make videos. Because depression is not only in French. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know when you're going to start the, uh, obviously it was supposed to happen, but the pandemic changed it. Do you know uh, when it's going to happen? As soon as the, the, as the gyms are open, because, are, are open because um, you know, my goal was to bring people in the gyms. Uh, maybe, you know, when uh, people will be able to be more together in, uh, and, and, you know, when I, if I am able to bring people with me to walk and just maybe do warm ups or, or just talk, be at the same park all together, you know, I will, I will, I will do it. But right now, I have to, uh, I have to wait for the laws to to make some changes because I don't want to, you know, I I, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to have to pay some fines. You know, the, yeah. the fines are so, so, so expensive. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want anybody to be in trouble with uh, with the, the, the laws and and may, even with the sickness. So that yeah. virus, you know, yeah, we saw that it killed people. So so we have to be careful and, and just follow the rules. And that's it. As soon as we can, I go back on my uh, on my journey and I will I will finish it. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for the, for the time. I'm, I'm going to include all the links to, to your page down below. And um, 
I hope uh, when you come to Halifax, when you get to Halifax, I'll uh, I'll come meet you, and uh, it'd be an honor. Yeah, I, I won't. I want to be in Halifax. It's so beautiful. I went there so many times, and uh, you know, like like I said uh, yesterday, I I, uh, I went to uh, to East Coast first uh, in my life. And uh, I fell in love right away. And everybody that knows me know my 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 uh, uh, how I, I am. You know, I am kind of quite a peaceful. You know, even uh, yeah, if I was uh, fighting, and and everybody was saying that the way you act, I, I see you in the West Canadian. You know, in in the Rocky Mountains or you know. And I went to that. I did a road trip last year, and I, I never felt the same the same things. That I felt when I was uh, I was in the East Coast, on the East Coast. So I can't wait to be back in Halifax. Can't wait. Yeah, we're very passionate over here. We're, we're all very like outgoing and, and peaceful. Um, but uh, thank thanks again for the time. Um, looking forward to to watching your journey, and uh, hopefully you can get started soon once all this clears up. My pleasure. Thank you for your time too. Yep. No problem. All the best.